Hey everybody, Noah here with Learn Meta Analysis, and in this video we are going to go over moderator analysis for both categorical and continuous variables. We are also going to export our data into tables like we would need to report in an actual manuscript. So, uh, I will warn you, this is probably going to be a little bit longer video, and this is probably one of the ones where you need to pay the most attention as you are typing in your commands into R. As you have probably noticed, if you've played with R at all, there are a lot of opportunities to do things incorrectly and it will still give you a result. It's just not gonna be the result you want. So I am going to try and point out all of the super, 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 super important things as we go through, um, but please make sure you use this as a template uh, or as a reference, I should say, so that you don't make any mistakes when you run your own analysis. So with that said, we are picking up where we left off. We are assuming you have run your overall meta-analysis and you have examined the influence and everything was cool. So we're just gonna continue to build from there. So the first thing that we're going to do is a categorical moderator analysis. This is tricky, okay? So please pay attention. Um, the, there's a couple important factors as we go through this that I wanna point out along the way. So the first thing that we are going to do is calculate uh, a value that is pretty commonly known as Q between. Uh, in metaphor, they call it the test of moderators, but there's actually two test of moderators. So the first thing that we are going to do is calculate if there are statistically significant differences between levels of our moderator. So what does that mean? We have, um, in this case, we're going to be looking at grade range as an example. So give me one second, I'm gonna show you what that looks like in our actual data set here. So in our data set, you can see under grade range, we coded as other, post-secondary, grades six through eight, not stated, or we also have one down here at grades K through five. So this is what we wanna know. We wanna know if there's a significant difference in effects based on the category. Hence, we're going to run a categorical moderator analysis. So the first thing that I do is name my item. Now, I always name moderator analyses mod dot. The reason is because it helps me find it quicker, right? I know mod in my mind stands for moderator, and then dot stands for uh, the whatever comes after the dot is whatever that is. So in this case, I'm looking at the grade, and then I also add Q to this. And the reason is because we are going to actually run two different tests when calculating our categorical moderator analysis. Okay, so I put the Q here because this first one, we are trying to calculate Q between, and that makes it really easy for me to find. So that is my naming convention. We know before that this little backwards arrow is saying whatever comes after that, we wanna name it as that. So we have that there. We're going to say do a random effects meta-analysis, that's the RMA, using our effect size, YI, our variance, BI, and then we wanna add in mods, right? This is our moderator. So we type in mods, we use equals, we use the little, I believe this is called a tilde. Um, and then because we're doing categorical, we type in the word factor, okay? This lets metaphor know that we want to do a categorical analysis. Then I type in my variable name. In my CSV file, this is called grade range. So if I open this up, you can see over here, I have this column named grade range. I'm gonna close that, and then I need to tell it what data to use. We're gonna use the uh, dat1 file, the same as we did before. And then I also want it to display these results. So I'm gonna highlight both these lines at once, which is perfectly fine to do, and hit run. Okay, so what do we have here? We have a lot of results and it looks a little bit scary. So let's break this down into things that actually make sense, okay? So first, we wanna see what we have. We see it's doing a mixed effects model, which is normal for a moderator analysis. We can see that we have K equals 27, the same way we had before. And we can see that for tau squared, we used Remel, same as we did before. So um, we have some of our heterogeneity statistics here. We're going to skip this for now. Instead, what we wanna focus on first is this test of moderators, okay? So I mentioned before that there are two different ones. This is the one that is commonly known as Q between. This tells us if there are significant differences between levels of our moderator. So you can see here, there is not. We're looking at a p-value. If p is less than 0.05, then there's significant differences between levels. P is not less than 0.05 in this example. So what does this mean? This means that if we look at our levels down here, you can see we do have one that's uh, being marked as significant, right? As like 0.05, it's actually 0.06 here. So um, it doesn't really matter. But even if this was significant, it wouldn't matter if there were not significant differences between levels, right? So this is what we are looking at first. I like to think of this as like 
my commander of my of my moderator analysis this is the only thing that is of importance to me when i first start looking at this analysis i go straight to that test of moderators if it's less than 0.05 i know there's significant differences between levels if it's not then i know it's not as interesting at least to me it's not as interesting in many cases that said there are a number of cases where it might actually be an interesting finding that there's not necessarily significant differences between levels but that's a whole different conversation so here it is not significantly difference between levels now the other thing that i want to point out is this test for residual heterogeneity this is another thing that's not often talked about in meta-analysis I do not know why. Uh, I should say in educational fields, it's not often talked about, it's not often reported. I don't know why, but we should talk about it. So what does this mean? This is essentially looking at, is there unexplained variance that the moderator doesn't explain? So if this p-value is significant, less than 0.05, that means there is unexplained variance that the moderator does not fully explain. What do we need? Well, we know that we're gonna need this test for moderators when we report the results of this analysis in our paper. But how do we get that out of here, right? So if you started working with R, um, like you can copy paste these things to Microsoft Word or something like that, but it doesn't work very well. Um, so here, I will open up a Word document and I will show you what I mean. So the first thing, let me bring Word over here and then we'll open up R and let me just try and copy paste these results because Let's see, we want this mixed effect model, right? So we are going to try and just highlight all of this and we will do a quick copy paste into Word. What happens? Wow, that's pretty high on the not even remotely helpful scale, <laughs> right? That's that's not, not very helpful for us. So you're probably thinking, well, what happens if we do just uh, like get rid of the formatting? Okay, that's a little bit better, but it's still kind of a nightmare to actually deal with in a meaningful way, like if you're trying to put this into a table or something, that's still pretty complicated. Okay, so let's not save that. You might be wondering what happens when you try and copy it into Excel, so I'll just show you what happens here. Um, so this is a little bit better. Let me make this text into something you can actually read. Okay, so this is a little bit better, but also not really, because if you look here at the top of the screen, we are over the word estimate, but that doesn't show up, which means that it's all in this first column. Right? It's all in this first column and it's just spaced out differently. So this isn't actually very helpful for us either. So we need to find a way to get this data out of the out of R and into a practical format that we can actually use. And from this first analysis, the only thing we actually want right now is this test of moderators. So we have this code here that's going to do this for us. So hmm. I will give you the high level highlights of what's happening in this code. We're not gonna break it down absolutely step by step, um, but you are more than welcome to dig into this in more detail as you get more comfortable with R. But if you're watching this video, I am assuming you're very new to R and this is not likely something you're gonna wanna dig into right away. Um, but basically we're grabbing a data item from within mod.grade.q. So we're grabbing this item from within the metaphor results and we're calling it something. We're also grabbing a couple other different items from within the results and we're calling it something else and then we're putting it into a specific format. That's what down here is doing and then we are writing this into a text file down here at the bottom. So let me run this and I'll show you what the result is. So I run this whole group of things together and you can see tells us it did it and then down here in white we actually have our result so it's got two of them we're going to ignore this second half this qbna and instead we only want this first half qb is four and it's 4.28 and uh, the p-value is 0.369 so let's just double check and make sure that's accurate degrees of freedom is four yep degrees of freedom is four the actual value 4.2829 down here 4.28 and then the p-value is 0.369 and the p-value was 0.369, perfect. So the other thing that this did is it actually wrote this into a text file for you so that you have that later. And so it called it Q dot Q grade Q. Okay, so if you open this up, you'll see you have this information here just ready to be copy pasted into your Microsoft Word document or your LaTeX document or whatever you happen to be using uh, so that you can write down your uh, QB value and you don't have to go find it later, right? So. That's that. Okay, so now we have, what have we done? We've essentially investigated the test of moderators for this variable, the grade variable. What we found was it was not statistically significant, but we don't really have much other data. And if you've read uh, meta-analyses before, you know that this table that we looked at here, where it's got the intercept and then these grades listed, 
this is not how we're used to seeing it right we're, we're not used to seeing that intercept value there so what can we do like is there a way to get this to where you are used to seeing it like more like an ANOVA type model rather than a regression type model that's got an intercept the answer is yes so let's do that next so we are going to try and get the mean effect sizes for each group and and get rid of that intercept here so what we're doing first I use the same naming convention, except I take the letter Q off because this time I'm not in, interested in the test of moderators. It's actually going to be a different test when we run this. So that's why I take that letter Q off so that I know I need to ignore the Q statistic. Then I'm going to do essentially the exact same code until here. You see this minus one? Super, super important in this case. That is removing the intercept. Okay, so let's run this. Okay, we know it ran, and then we want to actually display it. Okay, very nice. So what do we see here? First and foremost, like I said, this is a different test of moderators. Okay, the other one tested if there were differences between groups. I believe this one tests if, there, if it is significantly different than zero. Those are two very, very different things. Okay, that's why we, we wanted to know earlier if there are significant differences based on if they're in grades six through eight or grades K through five or any of these others, right? So that is why we ran that other test. The other test is the important one for what we are trying to understand. We are going to ignore this test of moderators for now. Instead, all we did was remove the intercept from our model and you can see that we now have all of our levels and we have significance values for all of our P values here. So what can we do? Well, when we look at this, this is what we actually want to report in our paper, right? This is, this is the really important information for us for actually like displaying. So what, the way that we would typically display this is we would put this in a table with our Q between value. Like I showed you before, there's no easy way to just like copy paste that out of R. So what we need to do is a little bit more code. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to save this table result into its own data item. So what we're saying is we're going to say mod.grade, same as before, underscore table. I put underscore table so that way I know this is my table stuff. So then we are going to say we want the coefficient and we want the summary of this analysis. And we specify which analysis this was. This was mod.grade. We're going to highlight this. Whoops. We are going to highlight this and then we are going to run it. Okay. So that saved that, and you can see it is now over here in the right in our environment. And you can see it saved uh, six variables, the estimate, standard error, z-value, p-value, and the confidence interval. Okay, good first step. But the next thing that you're probably thinking is, well, what about calculating participants and stuff and like knowing the number of studies for each level of the moderator? Those are, those are really good contextual features. And so we've written this code here to essentially build that in. Okay, so I'm not going to run through every single item here because there's a lot going on. But basically, we're grouping by our, uh, well, it's called a factor, but we're grouping by our variable, right, by our moderator variable. And we want to know how many were in the intervention group. We have that as the N, and that's going to be labeled N for experimental, for N of the experimental group in this case. Then we want to know how many people were in the control group. We're going to call that N control. Down here, we're just doing some more rearranging and counting, and it's going to end up binding these things together into one table, and it's going to write a CSV file named mod.graderesults.csv into our working directory. So that's a high-level overview of what's happening here, but let's highlight this and run it. Okay. Oh, I forgot. Okay, so if you look here, we see an error, and it says it doesn't know what this function is. That is because I did not load tidyverse, okay? So if you remember from earlier videos, I only loaded metaphor. Um, I did not load tidyverse, so we need to load tidyverse real quick. So we'll just say library tidyverse, we'll hit run. You can see it ran a bunch of stuff, and then we'll go back down here and we'll try and do this again. So that command is part of the tidyverse package. There we go. Okay, so now it was successful. If you look here, we now have an Excel file called mod.grade mod.grade result. It's actually a .csv. So let's open that. Okay, so this is what we would see, and this is probably a lot more similar to what you're used to actually seeing in meta-analyses that you read. So the first thing that I do, if I'm going to actually put this into a manuscript, is I'm usually building a bigger table, so I'll copy-paste all of mine into one bigger file, and then I get rid of this first column, because it's not important. 
in most cases, at least for me, it's not important because I already have my items labeled properly here. Then we can see it gives us the number of participants that were in the experimental group for each one of these levels, the number of participants that were in the control group for each one of these levels, the number of comparisons for each level, our effect size, standard error, z-value, p-value, confidence interval. Okay, so we're there and you're, you may be thinking, well, what about the queue between? I usually see that. Well, we actually had that text file saved already, right? So what we can do is simply take this information here and we can copy it straight into our Excel sheet. Boom, done, right? And there we have our beautiful table. Uh, you can clean it up more if you want to. So for example, I typically will uh, drop these down to only two decimal places, sometimes three. I'll often combine these together so that it's not a separate column uh, and I'll present it in a little bit different fashion, but it really doesn't matter as long as these are well labeled. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for creating that. So let's close out of here and let's take a look now at a continuous moderator. So uh, that, if you recall, we were running all of these before with our categorical moderators. But what happens if you have a continuous moderator where you're, it's also called meta regression? What if you wanna run a meta regression? Well, what we can do here, I've uploaded some fake data. I just put in some random numbers. Uh, I just did like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then repeated it. So I have no idea what this result is going to actually be in our data set, but I called it mod dot Cont for continuous. Um, we are going to say we're going to run our random effects meta analysis. Our effect size and variance are the same as before. Under mods, this time we are just saying the column name. So we're not using factor. Remember, factor was telling it that we wanted to use uh, categorical variables, and this time it's continuous variables. So we can get rid of that and just leave the name of the moderator there. And then we use our same data set. So let's run this and see what we get. Okay, interesting. So you can see again, mixed effects model, and it's got 27 comparisons in it, and we used REML. Uh, we can see our test of moderators is not significant. Okay, so this is not a significant predictor. Um, so down here, you can interpret this in a very similar way. It's essentially regression. So you can interpret this just like regression. We have our p-values here, but again, we really wanna pay attention to this test of moderators, right? Because this tells us is it something actually important or not. So there we go. That is how we do uh, our moderator analysis for both categorical and continuous variables. Um, we've created our tables, we've calculated the number of participants each group, and we have calculated the number of studies for each level of the moderator as well. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys in the next video.